Oh, here, let's watch this. We were able to a short while ago take control of the surveillance system exactly in the area opposite of Nahal Oz. On the morning of October 7th, more than a thousand fighters from Hamas broke through the 20 foot high barrier that has long separated Israel from God. This is, this is an insane, insane, not only unexpected, but just like over, overwhelming, like, military operation that I, like, no one could have ever fucking imagined. What a historic failure for Israel. What an utter failure. Like, it, it is so, like, everything that could have gone wrong in the lead up to this moment happened. Everything. Moving soldiers around. Like, uh, not, not being ready uh, with a with a fast enough response time, having a fucking IDF that is way too focused and preoccupied with uh, being an internal security force that's used to fucking sniping children and journalists and not actually fighting in real combat. It's a failure on par with the Tet Offensive. Yeah, it's just crazy, dude. Can we talk about the U.S. southern border then? Same scam? Brother, what the fuck are you talking about? We do not occupy Mexico. We have genuinely created conditions that are horrifying for Latin American countries, but we do not occupy Mexico and, like, kill a bunch of Mexicans regularly with, like, bombing campaigns. However, that might happen in the future, by the way. That is what the Republicans want to do. The people that come from the southern border come in to the United States of America not to, like, kill or take hostage American citizens. They come in... Because they want to be American citizens. A little different. No, entirely different. And for the record, this does not mean that like Palestinians would break through that border with the express purpose of killing Israeli citizens if the apartheid regime was ended tomorrow. I am not saying that at all. But as circumstances stand currently, that was the military operations goal. Take hostages, kill as many IDF uh, soldiers as you possibly can, which it was a failure on their end, obviously, because they're not a fucking real standing military, but a collection of different militia forces. Gaza civilians and the militants of Hamas. A billion dollar upgrade in 2021 outfitted the barrier with what Israel said were cutting edge surveillance tools a deep underground concrete layer to block Hamas tunnels, and remote control machine guns above ground. Israeli officials hailed the new wall. The surprise attack on October 7th was the deadliest single assault in Israel's history. Israel's government has pledged to investigate in the catastrophe which many security analysts have rated the nation's worst intelligence failure. We didn't believe that Hamas had this capability, and so we didn't see it coming. So how and why did Israel's vaunted defenses fail, allowing Hamas to pull off its shocking assault? To answer that question, the Washington Post analyzed hundreds of videos and photos posted on social media, including visuals of the attack and the preparations that preceded it. We examined maps and planning documents recovered from slain Hamas fighters, reviewed videos and audio recorded by militants' body cams and Israeli security cameras, and spoke to witnesses. Our reconstruction shows how Hamas fighters quickly neutralized key parts of the so-called Iron Wall, exploiting vulnerabilities created by Israel's dependence on technology and remotely monitored surveillance equipment. Videos of militants training to attack mock-ups of Israeli compounds had been posted to social media months earlier and were visible to all. We took the visual evidence from October 7th and mapped it across southern Israel and inside the Gaza Strip. We used the position of the sun to estimate when key events occurred. We located footage from 14 breaches determining where they occurred, from the Erez crossing in the north to Kerem Shalom in the south. Israel says there were around 30 breaches in all. Oh, 
dawn, around 6.15 a.m., fighters set off from Gaza. People along the road cheer them on. As fighters make their way to the fence, Hamas begins firing a barrage of rockets at targets across the barrier around 6.30 a.m. Dumb bitches in the chat saying base the air are literally just fucking, oh my God. Like, let me tell you, dude, there's nothing better, nothing better for all my fucking most psychopathic haters. For, for all of my most psychopathic haters to just like clip everything you're saying to just be like, Look at Hassan. He loves terrorism. He loves terrorism. He's the biggest fan of terrorism. Like, come the fuck on, guys. Okay? Come the fuck on. A lot of people still unironically think, pretty sure it's your haters typing it and then clipping it. Maybe. A lot of people do unironically think that um, they can get be as callous about the violence that, like, uh, defenders of Israel can be. You can't be. For example, I'll give you an example. Defenders of Israel can be as racist as they want towards anyone who is in defense of Palestinians or Muslim themselves. Unimaginably racist. Okay? They can be as unacceptably and unimaginably racist as, they, as you possibly can be. Okay? They can keep saying consistently that I am a supporter of Hamas, for example. Call me Hamasabi. Okay? They can do that. No one will question it. No one will go, man, that's really crazy. I can't believe that. I can't believe that this guy is saying it. They won't. Congresspersons can say it. And no one will question it. You do not have the same fucking, like, you, you do not have the same bandwidth. You cannot be callous. You can't. Israeli officials say more than 3,000 rockets were fired in total and were likely intended to distract their troops. Israelis are observing a week-long religious holiday. The country's military has recently been shifting troops to the West Bank amid growing unrest. Text messages between residents of one kibbutz show their assumption that the rockets are a routine huh? irritant rather than yeah, anything good. more serious. In one video, Hamas reconnaissance fighters paraglide over the barrier under the cover of the rockets. Training videos posted to social media after the attack show that militants had been practicing that and other tactics they used to breach the fence. They had also been expanding their training camps, activity that was visible in widely available online maps. The evidence of militants being trained and armed was largely ignored or dismissed, experts said. After the initial rocket barrage... Yeah, like, how the fuck do you miss that? Actually, how the fuck do you miss that? Like, what did you think that... The dudes that were training in the fucking paragliders... Trying to get ready? Like, what? You, you saw that and you were just like... Yeah, no, those guys are just enthusiasts? Like, what happened? Hamas soon transitions to the next stage of the operation. Sever the connections that link Israel's surveillance and security system. Inside the group, Peak it is known as the blinding plan. Israel's visibility of the fence was already partially reduced because three of the seven surveillance balloons used to monitor hotspots along the Gaza fence were not in operation. These Skystar balloons carry a long-range 360-degree camera. The cameras on the three balloons needed maintenance, but the model that Israel uses is relatively old and is no longer made. On the morning of October 7th, Militants cut one of the balloons loose, causing it to float away. Along with the balloon, Hamas videos capture attacks on at least seven critical surveillance and weapons towers along the fence. How did Hamas know where to hit? Analysts said Hamas may have spent years collecting intelligence about Israel's defenses. The militants used drones to gather data and elicited information from Gazan day laborers who had permits to enter Israel for work, Israeli intelligence officials said. 
Hamas really committed a very serious intelligence work. Uh, it was not a, you know, uh, a general blind offensive. They knew exactly what, what are the points they want to attack. Hamas planning documents indicate that leaders had deep knowledge of the models of equipment used by Israel that they would need to overcome. You know what's crazy about this? And I, I will repeat this again. Like, think about it this way. Not a real standing fucking military, okay? Basically patchwork. Patchwork of militias, a network of militias. They accrue all of this intelligence as best as they can while being under 24-hour surveillance. And the, the, the civilian to militant or military or security forces ratio even after all is said and done, in the Hamas operations and the Palestinian militia operations on October 7, is literally infinitely more, infinitely less uh, fucking uh, civilians per capita have been murdered in this situation than Israel for the past month and a half. This does not mean that Hamas's actions were not barbaric. They were. But think about how barbaric Israel has been when they literally fucking have 24-7 surveillance, superior firepower, and the Palestinian civilian registry, the population registry. Fighters also carried with them open source satellite imagery annotated with coded locations of key structures along the wall. One type of system noted in these maps and attacked on October 7th are surveillance towers. In this video from the day, an unmanned drone drops an explosive on one near Kibbutz Beri. Training videos recorded before the attack show fighters had practiced dropping explosives from inexpensive hexcopter drone models and launching fixed-wing Zuari suicide drones. Some of these towers house speed surveillance systems, which contain HD cameras, laser and infrared sensors, and radars, and can see people almost six miles away, according to the manufacturer. Each unit costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. In this document, Hamas specifically notes the locations of such speed surveillance systems. Visuals and other data from the towers are sent through hardwired cables to military outposts along the fence, notably facilities at Reim, Nachal Oz, and Urim. They are monitored 24 hours a day by Israeli personnel, according to security analysts. The former head of one of the firms that built the fence told the Post that without the towers and their sensors, Israeli visibility would be severely limited. The, the command center are disconnected uh, from the sensors and they are not able to give real-time indication what's going on uh, in the border in real time. Uh, when you are taking down the main communication towers, of course, some of them or all of them have backups. Uh, to my understanding, uh, most of the backups were taken as well. In addition to taking out surveillance towers, Hamas launches attacks on multiple sentry tech towers topped with Samson weapons stations, which feature machine guns and sensors. The towers are positioned every few hundred yards along the barrier and outside key military facilities, according to analysts and past reports. They are nicknamed Roe Yore, Hebrew for seas, fires. Once the sensors send intruder alerts, IDF personnel can fire the 50 caliber machine guns at targets by remote control. Israeli forces have used the towers to kill people it said were Hamas terrorists in past incidents. Yeah. But on October 7th, it's Hamas said. dropped incendiary explosives from drones, fired rocket-propelled grenades, and unleashed sniper fire at the towers, videos show. The full extent of the damage done to the weapons and electronic connections is not clear from the footage. Several of the towers are marked on maps recovered from Hamas fighters and first published by NBC News. The Post verified videos of at least two of the towers in these maps being attacked. This tower, located beside a reservoir at the fence near Kafar Azza, was attacked twice by Hamas drones. Improvised incendiary explosive devices with fuses were dropped on its camera and beneath its weapon system. Video released by Israel shows that in at least one instance, observation soldiers were able to use a weapons tower to disrupt a dozen or so Hamas fighters approaching the fence near Kisufin. Some Israeli tanks and armored vehicles were in positions to engage Hamas fighters, 
but videos show Hamas striking first with drones and rockets to take out these threats to its advance. The drone manoeuvre used on October 7th was well practiced, according to this training video filmed before the attack. Fighters carried documents containing three-digit codes to use when discussing Israeli vehicles and details of expected vehicle response times. Recovered documents outlined what the group said were different spots on the Israeli Merkava tank that, if hit, would destroy the tank and other spots that would disable it. Several fighters carry anti-tank rocket-propelled grenades, which, according to this document, can be used to penetrate the armor of the Israeli tanks. As the sun begins to rise, trained fighters use a range of explosives and munitions to blow holes in the fence and concrete barriers in multiple locations. It takes them only minutes. In Berry, fighters are seen propping up an anti-tank mine beside the fence while they fix other explosives to the wire. Another team appears to detonate explosives through a so-called strip and frame charge, closely resembling a device seen in a Hamas training video filmed earlier. This is the breaching device. Following the attack, Israel said it had also recovered blocks of plastic explosives from Hamas casualties. By sunrise, around 6.40 a.m., in all 14 breach locations captured on video reviewed by The Post, Israel's defenses appear to have crumbled. Fighters stream through, some in vehicles, others on foot. Most do not come under fire. There is no sign of Israeli personnel. In these locations, the fence has failed. The first waves of what the Israeli government estimates will be 3,000 militants quickly pass through. The stage is set for a massacre. More than 1,200 Israelis were killed on October 7th, according to Israeli authorities, as militants overran military sites and kibbutzes and rampaged through a music festival. Around 240 were taken captive and brought back into Gaza, Israel said. Within hours, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared that Israel was at war. The Israeli retaliation has been catastrophic for Palestinian civilians. A bombing campaign and ground invasion of Gaza has so far killed more than 11,000 Palestinians, including more than 4,500 children, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. The death toll rises daily. The failure laid bare by the Hamas attack has set off furious recriminations inside Israel. Stunned Israelis are now demanding Netanyahu's resignation and accountability for their security establishment's failure. The Israel Defense Force declined to respond to the post question, saying they would answer them after the war. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office also declined the comment. Huh. I don't understand how the fuck. No, that 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 snippet from the Al Qassam Brigades is old. When they're talking about, that's from like ten years ago, I think. Even when they're talking about like how they were able to overpower Israeli uh, forces, and we're shocked at how untrained they are. This is also, this is also a, a sentiment expressed by um, the, the Israeli bring defense forces and their commanders themselves. They've said this time and time again, that the, the uh, IDF being utilized, being comprised of like all these reservists and being utilized as an interior security force has caused them to no longer be this like incredible military that uh, they used to they claim that they were.